this other. Today we're learning how to do volumes by cross section. And I want to relate this back to what you've been doing so far. So when you rotate something about an axis, the cross section that's created is always what shape? Circular. It's a circle, right? A cylinder. A, and, it, and actually, if you do it three dimensionally, you get cylinders, right? You break it up into cylinders. So to find the volume of a cylinder, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, right? So you take the area of the base, which is pi r squared, it's a circle, times the height of the cylinder, right? Say the cross sections weren't circles. Suppose the cross sections were triangles. Okay. So if you take a shape where the cross sections are triangles, for example, a triangular prism, right? So the cross sections are all the same size and shape, but they're all triangles. How do you find the volume of the prism? And you know? Take the triangle and then multiply by the height. So yes. Half base times height squared. One half base times height. Okay, you're talking about different heights, but yeah. So, okay, just say it's the area of the triangle times the height of the prism, right? If it was squares, it'd be the area of the square times the height of the prism, right? If the cross sections were trapezoids, it'd be the area of the trapezoid times the height of the prism, right? Whenever you have a prism, the cross section <coughs> shape is, is constant, right? It's always the same. So you can take the area of that cross section times the height of the prism, right? What we're going to do today are volumes of solids where the cross sections are a consistent shape, but the shape might change size. So, for example, say you have a triangular prism, but the triangles go big and then small and then maybe get big again, right? So it's always, the cross sections are always triangles, but they're different sized triangles. A triangular hourglass. So, yes. So then, how do we find the volume of that? Well, it's still the area of the triangle times the height. But what we have to do is we break it into <coughs> infinitely many little teeny tiny triangular <coughs> prisms, right? Add them all together and get the full volume. Okay? If we did, if the, the cross sections were squares, so we would break it into infinitely many little teeny tiny square prisms add them all, all the volumes together, and get the volume of the full solid. So what, and so in general, what we get is this formula. So volume by cross section. So the volume by cross section, volume of any solid created where the cross sections are consistent in shape, but not necessarily size. So the cross sections are all squares, or all rectangles, or all triangles, some consistent shape. Then the volume is the area of the cross section times the height. And in our case, the height would be that dx or dy, because these would all be really tiny. And, you're, and then you take the infinite sum to add them all together, right? So your volume formula, and this works for the rotation ones too, because cross sections are all circles, right? And what was our volume formula for disk method? Pi r squared dx or dy, right? So it's, it's the same formula, it's just now that we're going to do it with things other than circles. All right? So volume in general for any solid where the cross sections are the same shape, no matter where you slice it, but just maybe different sizes, uh, it's always the integral of the area of the cross section, dx or dy. Now, dx and dy are a little bit trickier now because you don't have an axis of revolution. If your cross sections are triangles, you're not going to form them by revolving about an axis. So we can't just say horizontal axis dx, vertical axis dy. So instead, what we have to say is if the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, it's dx. If the cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis, it's dy. Be careful. Oh, that means perpendicular. Yes, that, the little line like that means, this means perpendicular. Be careful because sometimes they'll present the problem where they'll say the cross sections are parallel to the y-axis, right? Perpendicular. Which means perpendicular to the x-axis. So be very careful that you read and that you really remember 
that it's where it's perpendicular, that's what your dx or your dy is. Okay? Yes, yes. Okay? First example. We're going to do one example with a bunch of dittos. Just like yesterday, we did one example and then we just changed it a whole bunch of times. Same thing today. So we're going to do one example and I think we're going to do six problems out of this one shape. Okay. So find the volume of the solid formed if the base is bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 4. And the cross sections parallel to the y, uh, to the x-axis, parallel to the x-axis are squares. Squares are the easiest shape. They have the easiest area formula to figure out. All right, so find the volume of the solid formed if the base is bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 4, and the cross sections that are parallel to the x-axis are squares. There are only two things you need to draw to get these problems correct. I'm going to show you something else, but here's what I want you to draw. You draw, number one, you draw the base. So if we draw the base, we have y equals x squared, and we have y equals 4. So that's our base. The other thing I want you to draw is a picture of the cross section. So I want you for this problem, I want you to draw a square. Now you're probably asking yourself, I have no idea what this is going to look like in any way, shape, or form. So let me show you first what's going on. The squares are actually coming out of the board like this. They're coming out this way. This is the bottom and the squares are coming out this way. So I'm going to try to draw this three-dimensionally don't try to copy unless you really want to have to erase because it's probably not going to be that good. Uh, but anyway, what I do when I'm trying to draw three-dimensionally is I kind of make it... So the base, that's the bottom, right? That's the bottom of our shape. That's our base, right? And then, so if, like pretend that's what's here flat on the board, except now we're looking at it as though it's that way. The squares... Per, we're parallel to the x-axis, right, which means we're perpendicular to the y-axis. We're going like this. So the squares are determined by the length going across this way. So like this might be a really big square, but as we move down, well, that's more of a rectangle. Sorry, this is, this is why these aren't that great. I'm kind of doing rectangles, but just be understanding. Imagine that they're so, they Okay. So you get that kind of a shape, right? And what actually happens is the sides actually kind of curve down to this point at the center. Okay? So the, the cross sections are all squares, but they're all different sized squares. They start big and then they get really small right at the bottom. As in like no squares. As, well, yeah. Really small. Okay. All right. So let's talk about how to do this. So we know that this is going to be a DX or DY? DX or DY. 
Yeah, Parallel to the x-axis means perpendicular to the y-axis, so this is going to be a dy problem. When it's dy, do we do top minus bottom or right minus left? Right minus left. So here's how you know. Is everything okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the length of the side of the square is determined by this distance, right minus left. Because remember, the squares are coming out this way. So a bottom of the square is sitting across this shape. And whatever that length is determines how big the square is. So that length, right minus left, this is the length of the side of the square. Now since it's dy, we can't have y equals x squared. We have to solve that for x, right? So what do we get when we solve that for x? Plus or minus root. Plus or minus root y. So this side would be x equals root y. And this side would be x equals negative root y. And it's right minus left. And it's right minus left. So would it just be 2 root y? Yes. So the length of our square is root y minus negative root y, which equals 2 root y. Did you get that? Jacob? <coughs> All right. Let's write a formula for volume. Volume equals, is there a pi? No. No, because no, that would be if it was circles, pi r squared, right? But these aren't circles, these are squares. So we have the area of the square, well, the side of the square is 2 root y. What's the area of the square then? Side squared. Side squared. So 2 root y squared. This is dy, so the limits have to be y values. Anyone know what the y values would be for the limits? Zero to four. Zero to four. Those are given. So zero to four. Alright, so the volume is just the integral of the area of the cross section. Where is the 0 to 4 coming from? Because it's bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 4. So this is 0 and this is 4. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Any other questions on squares? All right, let's take it up a notch. Can we do like yes, triangles. triangles. Okay. Let's do octagons. Oh, that would be difficult. Can we do a tesseract? Uh, it's a four dimensional cube. So does that sleep under account that the different heights of the squares? It does. That's why it's not two, it's two root y, right? So with the different y values, you get the different size squares. Right? And, and how, do you, how do you know that the squares are getting smaller? Because the root y would be smaller as you move down. Okay. Right? Yeah, I was just like. Okay. Like root y here, y is 4, so root y would be 2 here, but it'd be 0 down here, right? Okay, so as you move down, they get smaller. Okay. All right, so let's try another one. So we're going to do isosceles right triangles. What even is that? Is that like those even ones? They're like perfectly even on all sides. That's an equilateral triangle. So they, oh, I don't know what the Celsius are trying to see. With the hypotenuse on the base. Christian, wake up. They have to tell you for a triangle which part of the triangle does this length determine. Oh, I erased. This is x equals root y, and this is x equals x root y. They have to tell you um, which part of the triangle is, is on that base. So for this one, the hypotenuse is across the base, and then the triangle part is coming out this way. So if we draw an isosceles right triangle, but the hypotenuse is what's on the base, What would the length of the hypotenuse be? 
Uh, it'd be x squared. It'd be the same as the length of the uh, square. Oh, it'd be uh, it'd be square root of y. Two root y. Two, Two root, root y. y. That's it's right. still right minus left. It's still root y minus negative root y. So the length of the hypotenuse is 2 root y. In your groups, I want you to take the next minute and see if you can figure out the area of that triangle. You're going to have to figure out a base and a height. There's two, there's more than two, but there's two main ways to do it. Two different approaches. <coughs> yes, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Yes. We have a smart guy over there. triangle, if you split it in half like that, if you draw an altitude, it, uh, it really is a very nice bisector, so this becomes root y, and it splits it into two little mini 45, 45, 90 triangles, right? So if you think about it as a little mini triangle, that being a, the 90, right, 45, 45, then these two sides are actually congruent. So we've got, if this is root y, then this is root y. Right? What did you do that? You asked him. Oh, I thought you were being sorry. Wait, why is it congruent? I'm confused. Why is it congruent? Because they're 40, 40, 45, 45. Okay, this is 45. Because it's isosceles. Isosceles triangles are always 45, 45, 90, right? This is 45, this is 90. So what does that look like? 45? There you go. No, no, so we were okay. right. Yeah. 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 The height of the hypotenuse and the height of the the top to the other the triangle. Yeah. I'm thinking about it as that was half the triangle is the hypotenuse. Okay. All right, good. All right, now there's another method you can do if you like. 45, 45, 90, 90 triangles have side ratios of x, x, and x root 2. So you could just divide this by root 2 and get the other two sides, which are also perpendicular, and you could do one half this times this, right? Does that make, do you understand what I'm saying? So you could do this as two, 2 root y over root 2, 2 root y over root 2, and do one half this times this. I like this way better, but it's totally up to you what you prefer. So let's do volume. So our volume is... The integral, did the limits change? No. No, still 0 to 4. Um, all right, area of the triangle, 1 half times 2 root y times root y dy. It's just the area of the cross section.
All right, let's do one more this way, and then we're going to switch it up and do different shapes in the other direction. So let's do... Let's do a circle, sphere, semicircle, house. Semicircles with the diameter across the base. All right. So the semicircles are coming out of the board this way. <coughs> And this length is the diameter of the semicircle. So let's draw a semicircle. What would be the length of the diameter of the semicircle? Which is? Two, two root y, right? So we have a, a diameter of 2 root y. I want everyone right now to, in your groups, figure out the area of the semicircle. Set up your integral. I think we've got this down dirty. All right. Area of a circle is what? Pi R, Pi R squared. Pi R squared, right? Now, cornbread is. Okay. So that would be for a whole circle. So for a semicircle, it's one half pi r squared, right? Okay, so we'd have one half pi r squared. But is that the radius to root y? No. Just root y. That's the diameter. So the radius would be half of that. So the radius is just root y. Could you get rid of the roots and the square? Yeah, absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah, come here. Why is only the this square? Oh, because your formula for area of a circle, area of a circle is pi r squared, right? Not pi r. So it's just the radius that's squared, and this is a diameter, so our radius because the formula, when you have an area of circle, it's only the radius that gets squared, not the pi, right? And it's just, like if it was a whole circle, it'd be pi root y squared. It's a half circle, so you just take whatever you get times a half. So you don't square the half, you don't square the pi. All right, so do you understand that? Okay. Any other questions? All right, let's turn it sideways. It's time to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. That took way too long for her. <laughs> All right. Not only are we going to turn it sideways, but we're going to turn it sideways with one of the most difficult shapes to find the area of. It's really not that bad, but it does throw people. So the, the region's still the same. Good, but now we're going to be parallel to the y-axis, and the cross-sections are equilateral triangles. Oh, that's the one where all the sides are the same. Yes. Thank you, Nader. Okay. Nader Potter. You should invest in candy companies when you grow up. All right, so we have cross sections parallel. Parallel to the y-axis means perpendicular to the x-axis. So now we are dx 
So it's and now we're going to find our lengths doing top minus bottom. So, it's like so the triangles are coming out this way. Do you want me to try so and draw it 3D? Yeah, so it's sort of like... So All right, here we go. Three D imaging right here with no internet. Yeah, you can print stuff out. Okay. Yeah, we have a three D printer out. Okay. So now the triangles are going this way. I'm not drawing them. Well. They should be more centered. Still not drawing them all. It does kind of look like that building in Sydney, Australia. Except kind of without all the Except they should be equilateral and they're really, really not. You know what? I think your book has this one and I think they do a much, much better job. It kind of looks like uh, uh, horseshoe that you just kind of raised up and put back down. Yeah, and I don't really know what you can shape that with. Okay, like, I have like, equilateral triangles on a no, circle, maybe, you know? which would be very similar to equilateral triangles on a parabola. Uh, so, so these would be going the other way, but that's equilateral triangles in the base of a circle like that. Yeah. Guys, your book does a great job of doing some graphics where they show you what equilateral triangles on a circle could look like, right? There you go. All right. If you want to be able to see it again, you can video. Okay. Or you could look at your own book. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. So we have an equilateral triangle, so we draw an equilateral triangle. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, that length is no longer 2 root y. It's top minus bottom. Top minus bottom. What function's on top now? y equals 4. y equals 4. What function's on the bottom? Uh, y equals x squared. y equals x squared. So what's that length? 4 minus y. Or x squared. 4 minus x squared, because now we're dx. Alright. Oh, and there's the bell. Alright, wait, wait, wait. Quiet for one second so I can finish the video. Guys, triangles of, that are equilateral form 30, 60, 90 triangles. So if you think of this as half of this, remember this is x, 2x, and x root 3. So the height of the triangle is half the base times root 3. So the height of the triangle is 1 half times 4 minus x squared times root 3. And your area of your triangle will be 1 half base times height. All right? 1 half base times height. All right, guys, good luck. Homework tonight is the last section of 7 to 